AFC North, again, CC is going to be one of the most interesting and competitive divisions in the NFL this season. Best division in football. I, I don't think it's debate. The AFC North is the best division in football. I could see any one of those teams winning the division. I could also see any one of those teams finishing in the last place. You could make the argument, certainly. Period. Yeah. Because the Ravens are seemingly going to be right back there with Lamar Jackson. The Cleveland Browns have an elite defense. If Deshaun Watson can come back and be healthy and provide them the quarterbacking that they need, the Browns could be right there. You know that the Steelers are going to start with a winning record. And now that they've enhanced their quarterback room with Justin Fields and Russell Wilson, who knows what they're going to be. But the Cincinnati Bengals are, are an interesting case study because when Joe Burrow is healthy, the Bengals are obviously a Super Bowl contender. Without him last year, they were still able to put together a winning record. And I don't think we talk about how good of a job their head coach, Zach Taylor, has done enough. Mm -hmm. But what version of Joe Burrow are we going to get this year? Because he's coming back from that thumb injury. He talked about his football, football mortality and how he needs to pace his progress, pace his rehab, because he's thinking about the postseason, not the beginning of the season. But what should we expect from the Bengals this season, CC? Well, the Bengals are going to be increasingly more Joe Burrow-centric, right? Because of what he's making being the highest-paid quarterback in all of football at $55 million per, um, a $275 million contract. They're, they're going to lose some, some ancillary pieces. So it's going to have to be about Joe Burrow elevating the talent base around him, specifically elevating the guys on the offensive end because they're going to have to make up for some of the deficits, some of the departures that they've had in recent years on the defensive side of the ball. So this is going to be a huge season for Joe Burrow in terms of being able to show that he's capable of being – you know, being out there, being healthy and available, and then being that force multiplier that the Cincinnati Bengals need him to be. Like, that, that there to me is no pathway to the Bengals competing for a division title that doesn't involve Joe Burrow playing well. If you think about the mm -hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers, think about the Cleveland Browns, both of those teams have shown that they're quarterback independent when it comes to their overall success. Hell, the Cleveland Browns started five different quarterbacks, four of which had multiple starts last year. And they still won 11 games. It's because they have the best defense in all of football. Right. And the Pittsburgh Steelers are not far behind that. So whether it's Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, we know that Mike Tomlin is going to have this team 500 or better. Why? Because that's all they've done in his 17 years of being there. But when it comes to the Cincinnati Bengals of it all, their identity more so than any of the teams in the AFC North is wrapped up in their quarterback. And it's strange to say it that way because the Baltimore Ravens have a two-time MVP at quarterback in Lamar Jackson. But even their team, run game, defense. So the Cincinnati Bengals don't have as many pathways as the other teams that they're competing against to a division title. So there's going to be a ton of pressure on Joe Burrow this year, given the stakes. And then also to add another layer to this entire conversation around the Cincinnati Bengals, you have what's going on contractually with their two top wide receivers and T. Higgins and Jamar Chase, both of whom want new deals. Of course, T. Higgins is on the franchise tag. We don't know what's going to happen between now and the two weeks before the deadline on signing him to a long-term deal, but it's starting to look doubtful that they're going to be able to come to some type of agreement. And then, of course, there's Jamar Chase, who's Joe Burrow's running mate from LSU, He's going to want a top-of-the-market deal, mm -hmm. and that is Justin Jefferson, which is $35 million a year. So, again, more pressure on Joe Burrow in this season than we've seen in any of his time in the NFL, and that's because this organization, this roster, is at an inflection point when it comes to their salary cap and being able to keep everybody happy. Trying to keep that window open. Joe Burrow says the window to win is his entire career. Well, this is the year that he's got to prove that. Absolutely. Because now this is the year where you're starting to talk about having to deal with guys that have been leaving the team as uh, because of free agency, right? Mm -hmm. Like a couple of years ago, they lost Jesse Bates the third. This offseason, they had to move on from Joe Mixon. That's a cap casualty. You're starting to lose some core components from the Cincinnati Bengals team that went to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. So this is going to be a, a big show and prove year for Joe Burrow. Okay. There's a lot to unpack there because he said a lot. Some that I think I agree with. Some that I think is just flat out wrong. This idea that the Bengals need to become more or will be more Joe Burrow centric is just nonsense. I hope not. If they do, that's bad business. 
That's not what they need to do in order to win. Just because he's getting paid all this amount of money and he is as great as Joe Burrow is doesn't mean that the whole team needs to revolve around Joe Burrow. Yes, you absolutely need Joe Burrow to be elite. Well, good news is he's an elite quarterback, so I think we're okay there. Yes, you have the injury concerns. I totally understand that. I'm not going to talk about the injuries this video. We've already unpacked that before. I think Joe Burrow will be fine. But this idea that you can just trot out an elite quarterback and win some games and be Joe Burrow centered, and that'll be good enough. And, and, and if you're getting paid all that amount of money, you better prove to be that. That's that's not fair to put onto Joe Burrow. That's absurd. That's absurd. And as we saw with Patrick Mahomes, especially last season, they had to lose some pieces and they won. And it, and it wasn't by making the Chiefs Patrick Mahomes centered. In fact, it was the exact opposite. They led with their defense. And yes, obviously smart offensive quarterback play, but it wasn't this Mahomes centered offense, right? It, it was a lot of, um, you know, just more situational football and not so much this Mahomes magic. So I'm just failing to see why there needs to be this emphasis on Joe Burrow and he better prove that the Super Bowl window is. Joe Burrow doesn't need to prove that. The only thing that Joe Burrow needs to prove is can he stay healthy? But outside of that, he's already proven to be good enough and to be elite. And now it's really like, the rest of the people around him need to prove that they can support Joe Burrow in that Super Bowl window. It's not on Joe Burrow. What else do you want Joe Burrow to do? He is a top all-time level talent, okay? So it's just it's just not on him. Patrick Mahomes didn't need to prove anything last season, and he didn't prove anything last season. What, what Kansas City Chiefs proved last season was that they are a highly run organization and that Andy Reid knows how to play smart, intelligent, situational football. And Patrick Mahomes is more than willing to do that. It's nothing that I didn't already know about Mahomes, but I guess maybe you could say that Mahomes proved that he has a humility and doesn't need to be the center of attention. He doesn't need to be the guy who's throwing for 5,000 yards and 600 touchdowns, which, you know, maybe some people needed to prove that. I think that he cares about winning and considering his deals that he's made in the past and some of his play, that he's obviously more Tom Brady and less, you know, I don't even want to say another quarterback's name, but someone who's just all about the money, all about the fame, all about the glitz and glamour. And so, Again, that's just a way how a smart franchise is run. And I think Zach Taylor has proven to be a, you know, again, I don't think he's necessarily on the level of, say, an Andy Reid, but he is obviously a top-level offensive mind. But the, the truth is, is like, even with Joe Burrow last season, if he was fully healthy, that defense was not good at all. Not good at all. And yet, if Joe Burrow was healthy, they still would have been able to do some damage so this is just not on joe burrow and, jo and, and your lack of ability to build a good defense is not joe burrow's fault i mean it's just i i just i just take issue with this emphasis on joe burrow and i don't think that this was chris canty's um you know uh kind of like his idea or, or or his agenda to do that right because he's obviously high on the Bengals and he believes in joe burrow but i just think that it's doing a disservice it's just kind of setting up the Bengals or setting up joe burrow more than anything where if they don't kind of get to that super bowl or reach this high levels that it's going to be like joe burrow wasn't good enough and i just like i just disagree with that i i, I really really do you got to draft better you got to develop better right you got to have better schemes you got to be prepare better like especially defensively and the problem is when you do have a player as great as joe burrow it's very you, you kind of see this in basketball more than anything when you have a great player the players around them become a little bit more complacent and you can see that offensively and i think potentially they had to get a little bit more strategic when they had their backup quarterback when joe burrow went down and to me, that's actually a good thing because you should be like, let's do some of these things with Joe Burrow. Just because Joe Burrow is an elite and all-time great doesn't mean that we should call his number every single drive, right? And I just think that 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 complementary, both offensively, defensively, but just even complementary offensive football and recognizing, you know, how to utilize Joe Burrow and put him in a situation to succeed is the best path forward for the Bengals. There is a difference. Sometimes you have a quarterback that is forced to put the offense in a position to succeed game after game after game. And then you have other franchises that put their quarterback 
in a position to succeed. And I don't think the Bengals in the past have put Joe Burrow in a position to succeed game after game after game. Of course, they they helped, they hooked him up with some weapons undeniably, but then you have to have the questionable offensive line, a terrible defense, which then puts a lot of pressure on Joe Burrow to have to overcome that, to have to throw for a lot of yards, to have to, you know, get some of these big plays, get, on, get off the field. There's just, it just, again, things can kind of spiral very quickly. And so I just think that if the Bengals can recognize Yes, we have Joe Burrow. Yes, he's a top quarterback. Let's build a complimentary team where we just ask him to do all the little things correctly. And then when the time comes, we ask him to be Joe Burrow. That's how you win. Build a better defense, right? Play smarter football. That's how you win. That is how you get by. Listen, it's how the Steelers were able to get by. And, and, and that's how Mike Tomlin is able to kind of get by with, with all these questionable quarterbacks. Because it's just playing smarter, more situational, more gritty, physical football, and that's proven. Obviously, can win, but it also. But the Steelers, what the Steelers also have proved, is that it's not good enough to get you to the Super Bowl and win, right? Like they, they've also proved that as well. That is the benefit that the Bengals have with Joe Burrow. So you just kind of have to put together this puzzle and, and kind of take pieces from around the league and 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 complete this picture. And I just don't think that the Bengals have done that enough. And I just, more than anything, I take issue with the fact that they say, we paid Joe Burrow all this money. It's up for Joe Burrow to overcome these deficits. And I just like, I, I just think that's um, a, a false story, quite honestly. No, it's on the GM to draft better. No, it's on the GM and the ownership or whoever to, to, to scout better, to make better, more strategic deals with other players, right? Like Patrick Mahomes took a bunch of money. Um, Lamar Jackson took a bunch of money. Like all these teams, all these quarterbacks have taken a lot of money and yet they were still able to maybe build like a great defense, which now helps out the offense, right? They're able to draft, you know, and, and get some great uh, pieces on their O line. Now they have a great offensive line. So now it kind of opens up the field a little bit. And now they don't need a, a bona fide elite number one wide receiver and say like a Tyreek Hill or an AJ Brown or whoever, right? Like you can get away with maybe like these more second and third wide receivers because you have a lot more time in the pocket and you have a more established run game. And that again, it just spreads out the offense like all of those things matter it's complimentary football complimentary football you're gonna hear me say that 10,000 times this season because to me more than ever that's what matters most in the NFL we always see this pendulum swing all around between what is going to win the Super Bowl this year it's going to be these high-powered big-time plays like we saw with Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill and then it was like what about now no it's hard-hitting defense smart football lead, you know minimize the turnovers and just good gritty physical football boom we saw that we need to establish the run game when the when the this team has over 100 plus yards rushing you know they win more games than not like we always see this kind of go all around and i just think right now we've kind of maybe come football complimentary football complimentary football but those are just my thoughts i would absolutely love to hear yours what do you guys all think do you think the Bengals have what it takes you know like what should we actually expect from the Bengals this season and joe burrow do you think it all comes down onto joe burrow let me know in the comments below I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights. But ultimately, let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here, and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, as it really does help with the visibility and the algorithm. Thank you so much, and see you next time.